the service. It's in the black notebook, if you don't know it. <clears throat> Open the eyes of my heart. Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. scriptures, turn back where we've been reading. Um, I don't think. Am I getting enough power coming through? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Where we've been reading in our studies on Revelation 1, in our study of Revelation chapter 5, coming up to that, now continuing on. And now we will try to, to go a little bit further today and just pray that the Lord would bless. We're glad to have some little visitors back there with us. And we always say to you, welcome, even though they're young kids and all, but we say to you, welcome. And, and what up here, and the first time here, you get to say, welcome, you're a visitor. Next time you're part of us. So we just appreciate that. Amen. Now remember the Lord willing, this coming Saturday, uh, Wade and I and uh, some of the brothers are going to go and up to uh, the Bill Yance for a minister's meeting. and. What we're do, what we're going to have to do is take enough to of uh, the the computer guys to be able to handle all of what Wade wants to do. It'd be easy for me. I just put up one screen and give the quotes, and I can go on. But Wade wants to do it in a different way. So a couple of two or three of the brothers are going to go to make sure they can do that. You know, get it all set. So y'all remember that'll be quite a ride up. We'll have to be leaving four or five o'clock in the morning and running up, and then we'll be late getting back. Uh, uh, Saturday night so just remember that but just pray the Lord would bless and also remember then this coming weekend that brother um, Prakash's son Boaz will be with us or Samuel ever which one it is will be with us for the weekend we're supposed to bring him back with us from up there so if we don't pick him up I don't know where we're going to get him at but uh, we pray that the Lord would, would take care of everything but I told him to make sure and meet us there alright then the the fellowship meeting will be the third Saturday at Brother Longoris, so remember that and pray that the Lord would, would be with each one. Uh, I think that's all that we've, we've got of the announcements. We welcome the visitors, so we say thank you. Just come and be with us. Amen. And let's just pray and read our scripture and then continue on with our thought. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your love and grace has been unto us and will always be unto us because we are your people. And Lord, we pray that you would just bless each and every one of us here today, bless those that are not here, and when they hear the tape, may your understanding be there to be with each one. We love you, and we thank you, Father, and we commit everything to you. Just remember to take care of Wade and June there as they're there with Brother Spencer and them for the weekend, Lord, and, and all in the traveling back home. 
pray that the Lord would bless. We love you and we thank you. Just have your way. You come and speak to our hearts and our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelations 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he said and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who by record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now we go to First Peter 1, verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied out of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or <clears throat> what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now written unto you. How? But, excuse me. They did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which things the angels desired to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The Lord had his blessing to the reading of the word. If some of the brothers would give these quotes out, I wanted to make sure just to you know, I want to try to finish up the part that I'm talking on this and and just to uh, get it, you know, into your hearts and thinking about what I'm saying and then God has to reveal it because that's one thing I believe. I believe no man can reveal anything. Even Jesus said, by quoting the prophet, that my own life didn't reveal that unto thee it takes the Father to reveal it. So it's going to take the Holy Spirit to reveal the Word or, or we won't get it. See, we can have the letter of the Word. We can read it and say, well, we understand. We can have the quotes from the prophet to say, well, here's what the prophet said. But that still doesn't make it a revelation. I've tried to emphasize that unto us to where that we could, could see and, and, and get a better understanding we had a real good time last night at the at the Bible study and we were on justification and we didn't get into any of the uh, of the scriptures basically uh, we will take that up at the next uh, meeting but you know about justification but I was just mainly talking about you know your time you repented and ask God to forgive you because that's where justification starts starts where you repented of your sins you ask God to forgive you that starts a work in you and that's justification chopping off your past sins and the prophet said future home said it does nothing to the nature or anything of you it just chops off that sin well we tried to bring that in last night and then we did pick up a little bit to get up to uh, justification through the baptism of the Holy Ghost and brother uh, <coughs> Joe will make you a copy if you desire it of the um, Bible study so that you can listen to it you know all right but just pray that the Lord would guide us on in more because we'll be trying to go into that later now we've been talking about the you know the book of revelations and we got into where we were trying to bring which was actually to to bring us to the to the uh, fifth chapter and bringing us to that ch fifth chapter we've come to a place and spent quite a time uh, talking about these things that are, are made known and, and we can see that you know the bride, this the fifth chapter is the bride in glory after the rapture alright and then from that then we went on to try to pick up some of the things and bring them to you and I chose today to just give you the quotes and that way then you know once I go along into the other parts of the seals and the things then you would have the quotes in front of you 
or keep it in front of you, I would invite you to bring these quotes back with you and stick them in your Bible or something to, <clears throat> you know, to be able to, when I say something, then you won't be confused because you'll know that, well, we were already, this has already been covered, you know, in, in our understanding. Now, in doing that, then let's just pick up where the prophet said, chapter 5, uh, I've spent quite a lengthy time now. This is a 20, we finished 27 messages on this. And, uh, you know, I pray that it's been helpful to you. Uh, it has to me to speak on it. And we spoke most of these quotes that we're going to give you to start with are quotes that we have given over and over and over throughout the message that we've been trying to bring over all of these, these sermons. And in doing that then, Let's just look at what the prophet had to say. Go ahead and pull up, Brother Anderson, number one on the quotes. These brothers are getting so good until some of them's coming out of the office and now to get to sit down out here and enjoy the, the fellowship out here, you know. But we really appreciate them and appreciate them to the fact that they'll be going with us to be able to help us on the Daniel 70 weeks. We wish we could take everybody, but uh, we don't have actually the authority to bring too many with us but we've asked permission to bring the technicians with us to where that we could put it up and you know and take our own videos and things and and making what do you call those big old words i never have done it it's the powerpoint you know they call that a powerpoint you know you make a powerpoint well i make a powerpoint the whole time i'm just pointing i'm trying to point you to the message of the hour which is pointing you to the Bible, yes. and that's a great PowerPoint. Amen. You know, it's, a, it's it's wonderful to be that, and you know, to understand. All right. Now look what the prophet had to say, because we've been over this quote many times. But look what he says. This is taken from uh, the Revelation chapter five, paragraph seventy nine and eighty, and we find out then that this beginning of the chapter, then we find that the the fifth chapter is just a tie block. It's a diamond hitch that ties the last part of the church age on the third chapter. The fourth chapter tells what John was taken up into heaven, and the fifth chapter is preparing for these, where you went through the church ages. Now watch him. Then John's lifted up in the fourth chapter, and the fifth chapter he's just setting a scene for the opening of the seven seals, just as he did in the first chapter of Revelation opening the way for the church seven church ages you know he's going back to that to show you there he stands in the seven golden candlestick and he's looking upon a jasper and sardis stone and he's preparing for the seven church ages and so he prepared back there for the church ages in chapter one now we come into chapter five and he's preparing for what now he's preparing for the opening of those seven seals of redemption See, that's what the fifth chapter is. That's the reason I kind of read it and then take it from there and talk on it and give the other parts of the scripture is because it's, it isn't verse by verse something that's happening. It's preparing for something to happen. And if you get to preparation, then you've just, you've, you're ready for it then. That's the way it is by faith or anything else. So what did he say up in the quote up above? Preparing for what? This is a preparing for the opening of the seven seals. Now, we say, well, we, you know, the prophet, it just, it just, that just sealed open. It was just that way. And, and we want to get to a point in a little bit. I want to ask you a question. But go ahead with number two on the notes, brother. And look what he says about this fifth chapter. This is paragraph 290 of the breach. 363, 317. And now watch what he done that, watch what taken place. You talk about a jubilee. Now this is the fifth chapter. All right. Now this is exactly the opening of them seals take place. Now if you look in your book on the doing, they changed that from taking to take, which is no difference in the word, but they tried to revise a lot of things in the new edition of your computer. All right. But now look, he says that actually there in chapter 5 is the breaking of those seals. Well, we know that chapter 6 is when they start breaking. You know, 
the lamb breaks the seal, etc. But now I've tried to get you to see what about it? That you and I, as the bride of Jesus Christ, there is no book in the hand of the one sitting on the throne until this end time bride completes that book. Right. All right. It's going to be completed. Because that's what he says. And once the book is completed, then the Lamb can take the book. Yeah. All right. See, then we are the book, right? right. Is there any problem with that? The believers in the book is the book. Right. We say, well, now look at the book. Well, I, there's a lot in the book that doesn't apply to you and I. Right. We're going to get to that this morning in, in part to show it. But yet, you and I are in the book. Not our names written there as Samuel Dale and, and, you know, and Dick Addison or anything like that. But it's like Brother Brown said about Brother, brother, um, Neville. Pat, brother Neville. He said, now, it's his name being in the book. said, it's what's the hour that you're living is written in the book. All right? Now, I believe that you and I are living in the last days, don't you? Amen. I certainly hope so. Uh, you know, I, I'm already 72, but I'm not worried about it. You know, but I believe we're in the last days. But you know what? I believe when I come into the message and saw what the prophet was beginning to say to us, I believe that was the end days, the new. I believe we're in the end time. The end time is not just to say one day or whatever. There's got to be a people make this word alive in this end time. And that's what I've been driving at all the time. Because the reason I can say that is the fifth chapter shows us in heaven. Right. All right. So then that means somebody's going to be there. Right. Is that simple enough? Amen. Somebody's going to be there in heaven one day to fulfill this chapter five. All right. And in doing that, why can't we believe we're them? Right. You know? right. And if we are, then we're the words that's in the book. Paul said in your written epistles. Right. Known and read of all men. But Ron said if it was time to write it, be no need of it, he said, because it would be over with. But he said, if it's time to write it, then it'd be another book of Acts written behind this church. Right. Well, I don't see nothing. Well, you know what? You'd have been the same way. Right. I've got tapes in my uh, truck, and I got, you know, and in the car and everything. And, and a lot of times I just keep playing that same tape. Well, you know, I hear Brother Branham, I've heard him probably 30 times lately talking about that. He said, you can go overseas. And he said, there'll be 30,000, hundreds of thousands come to a meeting. He said, and come back here. He said, standing out in the hot sun and, you know, everything. <clears throat> All day, he said, crowded around him at the airport that they had to take the militia to be able to get him in and out to just to get to hear about Jesus Christ. He said, and here you can take the finest buildings, a great comforts of the pews and said it's hard to get people coming said if they do they come oh well that's pretty good you know it's kind of like brother Mo, brother Tatum telling me about a woman preacher that was in this message that years ago and said they asked her you know kind of what she thought about brother Ram's ministry that was good but said seemed better than my own well, you know, something to that degree. Well, you know, I don't believe it. Amen. If I'd have been there, I wouldn't have believed it. Right. I would have just said, oh, they don't need me listening to you. <laughs> I'd have said, you do bore me, you know, because it's not true. Amen. See, we believe the prophet spoke of an end time bride. Mm -hmm. I believe God is revealing his word around the world Amen. and getting a bride ready Amen. against that day. Yeah, but I won't see signs and wonders. If you're back there, you'd want to see signs and wonders. Right. Open your eyes. God is doing things. Amen. There's been enough healing right here among us in the past three months to be able to see that God still is a healer. Amen. Right. Amen. You say, well, you know, no, we never will see the day like Brother Branham in the, in the doings because that's over with. That's right. It's not made for the Gentiles. The next revival is to the Jews right. after we get out of here. But that's no reason not to believe that we're in a revival. Amen. 
I'm in a revival every day when I read God's word and I hear that prophet as he begins to expound upon these things and to see the word of God revealed. That's my revival. I don't know what you're looking for. Amen. I just know one thing for sure. I'm going to make this statement and quit. If you can't see God now living and do it, then you couldn't see him nowhere else. Right. That's, that's right. just as plain as can be. It, the dead could be raised, the sick could be healed, and you'd never see it. Right. But if you're not ordained to see it, you won't see it. Right. So then I'd say, as far as I'm concerned, that's what I don't understand about people. People say, I don't believe so into what you want to say as far as I'm concerned. Because right. you're trying to make it look like everybody. You remember Brother Branham got a letter saying, we don't want you over here. Something like Africa, I think. He checked in to come find out that we was one man. <laughs> well, you know, the, the letter says we. Right. Well, we're to just sit down on our own selves and do whatever. But now listen. See, then in seeing what the prophet said, see, actually chapter 5 is you and I rejoicing in heaven. Amen. Now, if you get in your seal book, you'll find this quote. But Adam is referring to, and I invite you to read the seals. If you want to, start on the first seal and, and go through. I wish you would. Go we pretty well. We've covered up into the breach. And that way, when I make a statement, just, I read that. I read that. See? All right. See, then Brother Branham in the breach would say this is the opening of the seals. Then you'll hear him over like in the first seal, He'll say, John was rejoicing. You remember that? You remember where there in chapter 5 where he says, you know, all in heaven and earth heard me saying, heard I saying. Brother Run said he must have seen his name under there when one of the seals broke. Amen. Hmm? He said one of the seals broke back there to who was it that Elijah that said you know am I left alone and the Lord opened one of the seals and showed him that there's 7,000 believers but see we look at the seals as no it's got to be this it's got to be that it's got to be this it's got to be that and that's what we want to get to today I want to drive it down and then we'll move on and get over into the seals of what our understanding is but you say, well, how could the seals be opened in chapter 5? Because you're there. Right. I made that emphasis over and over in two or three messages that the prophet said, you are the book. Mm -hmm. And when the book was sealed, he said, you're sealed with the book. Right. 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 You're sealed with the book, he said. Huh? When the book is revealed to Israel, what are they going to see? Now come on, what is Israel going to see? <clears throat> well, they'll see this. Let's put it down in a nutshell. What's Israel going to see? They're going to see they crucified him, right? The nail prints in the hands, which we know that's not physical. So they're going to preach enough to them until they realize that they were the ones that crucified Christ. Right. right. That's right. But when they go away and mourn for and say it morning, you know, crying out, weeping. It's like I tried to emphasize a point. They know then they missed this right of sonship. That's why they're weeping and mourning. Sure, for the killing of Jesus Christ. But when they find out that they missed this time, because of the leaders of that day, they missed the Messiah. Right. Right. And they're going to realize they missed the right of sonship. Right. God won't take them back as bride. You can argue that point all you want to. But you ain't going to be in the Bible the prophet's message. Right. They become servants. Right. They'll always be servants. Right. 144,000 will be in the millennial reign. Servants to the bride. They'll never be nothing but servants. Why? They rejected the right of sonship. Amen. All right. Now, in doing that, then, 
They're going to see that you accepted sonship. Come on. They're going to see that you, the bride, accepted the right of sonship. And that you went through all of these things. And now you come up into heaven in a rapture. But remember the prophet said what? John going up Revelation 4 1 is the type of the rapture. All right, then. If that be true, then we're not there when the seals literally open to Israel. You agree? I certainly don't want to be there when the sixth six seal takes place to you. That's right. So if you want to be here to one, two, three, four, why don't you hang around for five, six, and seven? See, you want to divide that up and think, well, I got a quote here that Brother Randall said the bride goes up and the fourth seal. I agree with you. That's 100% correct. But you better believe that the fourth seal is Armageddon. Are you going to be here at Armageddon? Come on. He didn't just like this statement he makes here. It needs clarity. It needs understanding, right? Amen. That in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, the seals actually broke. Why? Because the Lamb took the book. Right? right? He stands with it in chapter 6, 1 and unfolds. All right? Now, so let's lay down some points and then I'll get to the question that hinges right there on that point. Go ahead with number three, brother. Look what your prophet has to say on Gabriel's instruction to Daniel 1961, 7.30, morning service. Just beginning what's underlined, you read the rest of it, I gave you the quote, okay? To where you can read it. Look what's underlined. The seven seal, seven plagues, seven woes, seven trumpets, has not one thing to do. I'll back up, let's read the other. It has nothing to do with the church. You know, nothing to do with the Gentiles. The seven church, seven seals, seven plagues, seven woes, seven trumpets, has not one thing to do. The Gentile church will be in glory at that time. Don't have nothing to do with us, the Gentile church. It only deals with Israel. Daniel, thy people, and Jerusalem. Now, so we're going to go down through some quotes, but to make a point. See then from Revelation 4, 1 to 19, 21, has nothing to do with the bride of Jesus Christ. Automatically, you run up with a question. What about Revelation? You mean Revelation ten seven? Revelation ten seven has got to go to Israel, right? Didn't Brother Brown say I always thought I had, would have something to do with the Jews receiving the gospel? Amen. And you know he will. You know why? Because it'll be his message, not him, and certainly not like a man years ago. That we were up there at Gainesville and he was teaching, he said, or told it, that you don't believe that two prophets could be a Gentile bride and a, and a Gentile prophet? Of course, you know who he was talking about being the Gentile prophet it was him. All right? But see, that's where people try to figure things out instead of leaving it alone, letting the Holy Spirit bring it to a place. So the bride goes up in Revelations 4 1. You say, well, what about Revelations 10, brother? Well, see, you're messing up on 10 1 anyway, because Brother Brown said 10 1, and this is a direct quote. He said 10 1 was the same as Revelation 1 13. Now, I didn't say that, he did. Revelation 1 13 is what? One standing in the midst of the soul, seven golden candlestick, like unto the Son of Man, girt about the paps. Feminish the bride. You hear a lot about 10-7, but you don't hear 10-1. We just read 10-7. Why did John, after all the bringing of what he read, and all at once he said, come to the thunders in verse 4. I mean verse 6, we'll run through there. Of the 10th chapter. 
But then all at once he said, but in the days of the seventh angel. I don't put him over there. I put his message over there going to Israel. But in the days of the seventh angel, that's where he's at. That's right. He's the seventh angel to the seventh church age, right? right. And see, it's be his message that will go to Israel because it will be his message that describes, because he was the one that described that the Jews would be rejected. That's where we got the understanding the Jews would reject the gospel or did reject it and won't be no word that they will actually return his sonship. But they return his servants. See, it's his message. Why? His message is the entire Bible, right? Right. Come on, that's the prophet's message was to take all the loose ends of the Bible that was left, things that was not understood by man, mm -hmm. and reveal it unto you and I. So I'll go ahead and ask the question now. Who broke the seals? If you say Brother Brown broke the seals, then you're deity. That's right. mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm blunt with you. You be blunt with me. People say, I don't agree with you. Well, that's blunt, ain't it? <laughs> well, I just tell you where I stand. And at least then you don't wonder what I'm talking about. You can see it right up front, what I'm saying. But you better believe one thing I'm saying, what he said here, let's, come on, let's see, you said that way, bring it some other way. See, but, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, see, John comes writing, he's writing, he's writing, he's writing. And then he sees the, the chapters, and the five, and he's six, and seven, eight, and nine. And he wonders, how in the world can I get this to the church? Because, come on, was not John commanded in the first chapter? to write these things down and bring it to the church. And he said, how can I get it back there? He said, but in the days, let me paraphrase it and change the wording and let you listen. But in the days of the prophet that will come in the seventh church age to bring the word unto us, the mysteries of God would be revealed. Did I change the Revelation 10 7? No. Put it down in plain language of where we're at and what we're doing. Yeah. You say, well, what about 18 4? Come out of her, my people. Well, how don't you come out of the denomination? That's right. 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 Come on. Right. See, what we're missing, church, is what I've tried to drive, and I want to drive it home today. Because it keeps bearing on me, so maybe it's me that don't understand. So you sit and listen while I preach to me. Okay. See, this message is the complete plan of redemption. Amen. This message, this prophet brought us the complete plan of redemption. Right. There's no loose ends in it. It's all perfect. <laughs> Even showing us the future home, showing us all of the things down through the ages that we would not dare to touch while we were among the denominations and things. But yet his message brought us the truth. Amen. And we'll be judged by it too because we've heard it. Amen. See then, we want to try to take something like place it. Like I told you, I got into a discussion with some ministers over this point. And they were saying, well, the book of Revelation is not in chronological order. I challenge you on Brother Brown's message, but you go find that for me. You find me where Brother Brown said it's not in chronological order. Come on, people don't like that because I'm sarcastic. I know it. If that means sarcastic, then just try to tell somebody the truth and stand on it and say, show me. I thought Brother Run said he'd be glad when somebody looked him in the eye and say, you're not saying what Paul said. Well, I think it's time to look people in the eye and say, you're not saying what Brother Run said. That way we stand on the message. I've got to face God for what I preach to you. Right, but you've got to face God for what it preached to you. Amen. And what you hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you see, we say it's not in chronological order. But Brother Rudd said that the end in the butts was in perfect place. That's right. I want you to show me where Brother Rudd said the book of Revelation is not in order. So you don't have any quotes for it. 
that's your supposed idea because you're trying to say this ought to be over here, this ought to be over here, and this ought to be over there. Why don't you leave it alone? Why don't you believe what he said? The seals is the entire Bible, right? right. Reveal what happened, was, what is, what shall be. Right. The complete plan of redemption was brought through those seals. Right. Right. Then why can't we just sit down and say, well, wait a minute. I don't understand it. We're facing that about the Daniel 70 weeks. And Brother Brown said, Daniel 70 weeks was a parable. That's what's going to be in the next minister's meeting. You know what a parable is? You know that Jesus never spoke to mankind without a parable. The Bible says. Without a parable spake he not unto them that it might be fulfilled. In parables he spoke the things right. You know what a parable is? Brother Adam said God done it this way to where he'd keep the church watching. Right? Come on. Keep the church waiting. See, if we'd have known it's going to be on a certain, certain date, I don't care what you think, we'd become lazy, shiftless bums because that's what happened. Right, all right. Because that's what happened to the people of the message. Because it didn't happen in 73. They went down. It didn't happen in 77. They went lower. It didn't happen in 80. You know, 6 and all like that. Or they went lower. It didn't happen in the year 2000. Boy, they really slumped down now. You know, they demoted. Because they, I can't figure it out. There's no way to figure it out. That's why Brother Brown said it's written in parables that you can't figure it out. And it would take a prophet to explain the parables, right? Right. right. Mankind can't understand. Jesus never spoke to them without a parable. Brother Brown's message is a parable. Same book, Daniel 70 weeks. He said Jesus was crucified in AD 30. <laughs> Two or three paragraphs later, he said Jesus was crucified in AD 33. We know that's exactly right. What well, how could that be? Because one of them is 30, another is 33. According to our calendar that we started off with a one, Jesus was crucified in 33. But according to where our calendar should have started, <coughs> Jesus was born in 4 B.C. That would make him being crucified in A.D. 30. The brother runs exactly right. Simple technology, simple terminology, right. if you understand. But you see, church, that's what we need. We need a revelation. Right. But you know what I love about Brother Branham as well as he was and what he would bring? You know, he'd say, now, I don't believe that the bride's going through the tribulation. Now, I'm paraphrasing the quote, but I can find it for you. He said, I don't believe the bride's going to go through the tribulation. But he said, where she goes up before or after, I just want to go up with her. Amen. Right? Amen. Now, that's how wonderful a man could talk that could stand there with, thus saith the Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. But yet he was saying, Wherever it goes, I won't go up with it. Mm -hmm. That's what we need, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That reminds me of what I've been doing. I've been praying for a revival. Amen. I told you about it for two years now. I've been praying for a revival in this church. We're not all over the world in this church. And you know what a revival is going to bring? It's going to bring some people in, but it's going to take out a lot of people. The Aikens can't stay with the revival. See, I realize that, but I'm, I've got to preach it and believe it. I'm praying for a revival. I'm praying for a house cleaning. You might ought to look under your seat. You might find a prayer cloth stuck under there. 
You remember that? That I put a prayer cloth under a brother's seat and about a month or so later he was gone from here. You might ought to look under your seat. You might find one. Of course, the way you juggle around sometimes, I have to put them, if I did put them there, I'd have to put them under every one of them. Because the way you juggle around, you know, and set in different places, it, you know. I'm making a joke on this truth. I'm praying for a house cleaning, starting in the pulpit. A revival. Because that bride, the brother Ryan said it'd take those seven unknown thunders to wake her up. Is that what he said? So I believe we're in the end town, don't you? Why can't I pray for a revival? I ain't praying for a worldwide sweeping revival. I'm praying for a revival in this church. Amen. Everybody else got to pray for their own. Get back to the point. You know, I get to preach and I get off the point. Okay. So now let's just prove that from Revelation 4.1 to 1921 that the bride is not seen on earth. Is that what your prophet is saying? She goes up in 4 1 and not seen to 1921. He called it 21, but you're going over and look at your scriptures about 1415, words come back in the millennium, you know. What do you believe that? Well, Brother Dale, how do we get to see those? <laughs> oh, praise God. Who broke the seals? Come on. And when did they break? Come on. According to my Bible, and according to your prophet, the seals broke 2,000 years ago. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, that's where people can't follow, Brother Brown. They think the seals broke, that he broke the seals. <coughs> He's not the lamb. The lamb broke the seal. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. You see then where we're putting it? All right. Well, let's get to the point and drive this down and then we'll finish our thoughts. Look at the next one, number four, brother. This is not the paragraph 193 or the 70th week of Daniel. Now, I'm reading up, I'm going to say this because sometimes you miss what said uh, when they put the 2010 version up they called it the 70th week of Daniel for some reason I don't know why it is not that in your book it is called the 70 weeks of Daniel it's not called the 70th week of Daniel see they changed those things I'm just telling you those things you go home and say well hey he don't even know what he's talking about because it, my book says 70 weeks of Daniel well that's the new 2010 version they brought out. Okay. So paragraph 133 says, 193, excuse me, says what? Now that we see, now, and all this now that we see will help us by His grace as we endeavor to approach these last seven seals. Now this is over in the 70 weeks of Daniel, right? He's getting prepared. Remember, that's a preparation. See where we have missed it? From Revelation 6, 1 to 1921, we would have missed it because, see, we, we have been trying to apply it back there in this Gentile age where you see it's over in this age. It's over to Israel. See, the church, I've tried to explain it to you for 40 years. The actual seal itself breaks to Israel when we leave. Brother Brown asked him the question, does Second Thessalonians, the man of sin, sit in the temple of God, fulfill the first seal? And he says, yes. That was on your questions and answers on the seals. But you see, we get all confused about what's this, what's that. Just look at your Bible. Look at the Bible and read it. Read your prophet's message. All right. Look what he goes on now, bringing these days up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, okay. Taking sides with Jesus, number five. Which we realize in Revelation is just one, two, three chapters to the church. The church goes up in the fourth chapter. It does not return anymore till the 19th chapter. That's after the tribulation period when God 
calls out the Jews. Okay? Keep on going. Number six, the breach. Paragraph 23. Now, now we're going to turn to the fifth chapter. Now, this is not the seven seals. It is the breach between the church ages and the seven seals. Now, there is also a sixth chapter, and there was a fourth chapter, rather, Revelation, in that it kind of reveals something that would take place after the church going up that the church goes up on the third chapter of Revelations. What, the end of the verse, right? End of the chapter, third chapter. All right. And does not return until the 19th chapter of Revelation. See, therefore the church misses the tribulation. Now we're great to, to want to quote and understand that we miss the tribulation. But how do you know you're going to miss the tribulation? Because the church goes up. But we glory and we're not going through tribulation, but we don't know. Well, I don't understand where we go up or what we do. We just we just miss the tribulation. Well, that's what your prophet come to explain. Look at the next one. Paragraph 194. The fourth seal. Watch. Rides a pale horse as he appears on his ride. This last ride. He's on his last ride. Now that is not in our day. That will be on down. It's the seal foretold because the church has done gone up when this happens. Mm -hmm. The Patriots stuck together. Look at the next one. Fifth seal. We're just going right on through the message. Mm -hmm. Paragraph 87, the fifth seal. That's the reason that he reveals that as I understand that it is because the mystery of the book of redemption as far as the Antichrist being revealed and at the same time the church is gone. And these things don't even happen in the church age at all. That's right. That they're away from the church age. The church age absolutely, the church absolutely is raptured at this time. The church goes up at the fourth chapter of Revelation and does not return again, return until it comes back with, with its king in the 19th chapter. But these seals are revealing what has been, what is, and what will be. Now that we, what has to be for the church age was revealed by these seals. All right, go on to the next, paragraph 218. Now these cannot be them souls, because the, the souls of, of the righteous martyred and the righteous people, the church, the bride, have done been took up. So they wouldn't be under the altar. They'd be in glory with the bride. You know, watch, they are gone in the rapture on the fourth chapter of Revelation they was taken up. And now who are these souls then? What is it? That's the next thing. Who are they if they're not the early church? It is Israel that to be saved as a nation. And so he carried it right on over. Look at the sixth seal. Paragraph 67. Now we're living in a terrific time. The, that, that, that you see these things that we're in now and we're studying right now is after the church is done gone see these things are the tribulation period six seal paragraph 190 now god is not dealing with the church no more it's done been gone he's dealing with israel see this is the other side talking about israel they're doing all right feast of the trumpets 1964 719 the morning service paragraph 36 in paragraph 37. <clears throat> the first three chapters of the book of Revelation reveal all the happenings unto the church. Then from the third chapter into the 19th chapter of Revelation, there is no more scene of the church. The church goes up at the fourth chapter of Revelation and returns back into the 19th chapter of Revelation, the bride and the groom together going to the coming to the earth. And then from the 19th chapter to the conclusive of the 22nd chapter, it's all on the millennium and what be in the, be, will be in the years that is to follow it during the 4th to the 19th. God is dealing with Israel. Right. God is dealing with Israel during that time. We're not there. He said, well, what about it, Brother Dale? What are you trying to show us? The seals broke 2,000 years ago. The Bible says. Mm -hmm. 
that was in glory because that's where we're at the actual opening of the first seal is not the manifestation of the man of sin is not until we get out of here you agree with that Leave them, church. We're in the time of the opening of the seals to the bride. Or the revealing of the seals to the bride. The making known of what those things are. We'll start this afternoon, Lord willing, back, pick up the deeds, doctrine, etc., and bring it out. The down to the Antichrist. Because the first seal is what? The Antichrist. That's right. No, the first seal is a revelation of Jesus Christ. The Antichrist is what you see in opposition. You better read your seal book. And then when you read that seal book, listen to the things Brother Ram said. He said, look at that fellow, look at that guy, look at this person going the other way. And you'll see that he's talking about the man of sin, the Antichrist. We're in the days when things are transpiring. We are the bride of Christ. We're not here in the tribulation, but yet we know what's going to happen in the tribulation. We're not here at the battle of Armageddon in the physical point because we've done gone in a rapture. But my point is, who opened the seal? I thought the lamb opened the seal. Right. I didn't know it was Brother Branham that opened the seal. He didn't open any seal. He just spoke what God told him about it. That's right. He come back from Arizona. The Lord had done spoke to him out there to go home. Right. And we told you about the seals. He comes back to the and said, I don't know what that first seal is. Oh, brother David, you don't understand he knew. Well, he said he didn't. Right. And now where we're going to cross that is right here. Because he said on that first seal, he said, I'd have made a horrible mistake. Right. If the Holy Spirit had not come and corrected him, he said, because I was going to preach what I previously preached. You know what he previously preached? That the white horse rider was the Holy Ghost. Well, you see, he didn't understand until the Holy Spirit met him in the room. He was fixing to come out and preach that wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, that's his word. I've had people say, well, you know, about different things about the message, and they say, well, that's just to deceive you, is the way he said it like that. <laughs> well, he done a good job matching up the Bible and bringing things out to really deceive a lot of people. Amen. You know, and who's going to be the one to figure out what's right and what's wrong? Well, this is the way I believe it. Okay, you're an American citizen. You got a right, but being a Christian, you don't have a right. Christians don't have rights. That's what me and my wife talking about yesterday. I don't understand the people of this message. They can just make up anything in the world and people will just run for it and flock after it. Any kind of a doctrine, any kind of an idea. That's right. And yet every one of them claims to have the Holy Ghost. Right? That's right. You ever heard a preacher say he didn't have the Holy Ghost? You ever talk to anybody about a doctrine that they tell you, well, I, this is what I believe, I don't have the Holy Ghost. No. People don't talk like that, do they? The church, who broke those seals? You're making it the way that the biggest portion of the people of the message is, but around broke them. But according to the Bible, the Lamb broke the seal. Right. According to Brother Random on the first seal, he said, the Lamb and God and the Holy Ghost, all this is what? He said the self-same person. 
Well, the lamb was the only one that could break the seal. But now I will go on further to sell you. Your same prophet also said that Jesus Christ didn't reveal anything to you. He said it takes the Father to reveal. <laughs> it takes the Holy Ghost to reveal. <laughs> so even though the Lamb took the cover off the book 2,000 years ago, it couldn't be comprehended. Right. So when the prophet came, did the prophet break the seals? Or did the lamb break the seal? Hmm. It's like I told you. I didn't finish that message up the other week. Sister Gail said you spoke to her heart this morning, to her head this afternoon. <laughs> it was all right. I was simply making a point. But around says you can call him Jesus, Jesus, and be worshiping the devil. You know that's a quote. Now is a denominational doctrine right? No. Well then if you believe a denominational doctrine, then you're worshiping Satan. Is that simple? Yes, but Brother Dale, we didn't I know it and God went to their ignorance. Sure. But then you sent somebody along like me to be stubborn and hateful enough to tell you or to ask you. Would your revelation go to Israel and convert the Jews? They certainly wouldn't listen to the two souls and two lords and all of those doctrines that's in the message. And Jesus wouldn't go out to the River Jordan. You remember what that man said to the Rabbi, when Brother Adam asked him about Jesus, he said, he's, that, he said, Isaiah, he said, that'll be the Messiah. He said, will the Messiah be God? He said, yes. Right. And then we look up and try to divide him. He said, don't you talk to them about that. He said, because they'll show you right where that doctrine came from. Right. Well, why can't we show the people of the message right where their doctrine came from? Right. Brother Brown said, a trinity came out of the pits of hell. Now that's my word, not my word. That's your prophet. And see, if you believe it, that's where you're going. Well, Brother Dale, all these doctors are such wonderful brothers. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right? You got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he ain't going to let you be deceived. You might get a little confused, yeah. You might have problems, yeah. But you won't be deceived. Right. Right. People say, well, I know all along that doctrine that man had wouldn't write. And you sat there and listened to it. <laughs> I didn't make the statement, you did. So you condemned your own self. That's it. You say, I know all along that wouldn't write. <laughs> well, why didn't you get up and leave? Amen. Well, Brother Dale can't do that. We've got to go to church somewhere. Well, get out and find one. Or start you one. You can't find it, start one. Preach the truth. Well, you're just trying to build a church up. No, I'm trying to empty it because we don't get, we're not full today, but when everybody's here, we're full. I'm trying to empty some seats. But now you know better than that because you know the way I preach and what I mean. I would to God we had to build 10 times this building Amen. for people that want to hear the truth. Amen. But I ain't got no time to argue and fuss with nobody about little pity patty quotes or thoughts that they got. Well, I think this is it. Brother Brown said that's what he's done in the garden. Right. Said she took her own ideas and said, I think. Mm -hmm. Back to what I said. You say, well, I can't think. If you're a Christian, you can't. Anybody want to argue that quote? If you're a Christian, you can't have your own ideas. Right. Right. Now show me in the Bible I'm wrong. Is that a right statement? If you've got the Holy Ghost, you can only be led by the Holy Ghost. Right. I thought we believed the Holy Ghost would lead us to the truth. Yeah. Right. The church, who broke the seals? Who opened? That's what I've asked the question. 
Who opened those seals? The way most people think Brother Branham did. No, they was open to John on Patmos. Mm -hmm. Put it in a church symbol. Why? Why was it put in a church symbol? Your prophet said it was to keep the church waiting. Had he wrote it down, the rapture is going to come in a certain, certain date. Come on, you know yourself. We just be relaxed and shiftless along. Yes. Well, it don't matter. That's next week. I got a whole week to get ready for the rapture. Yeah, that's what we do. The first seal, white horse rider. The Reverend said, John saw it in a symbol. Mm -hmm. But the seal was broke. <coughs> the lamb broke it. Right. But when it was sent down to man, it was sent in a symbol. God knowing that in the end time, there would come a prophet that would take them symbols and break them to the church. Now, what if he had never preached chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? What if he would never preached those things? And he would walked out there and he said, I want you all to know my revelation, this is the Antichrist. You had no foundation to base anything upon. You would have been taking his word. Right? But he preached all of those years getting us ready. I'm talking about right now to get us ready to where we can understand the symbol. But the Reverend said that was a white, righteous church. A beautiful church that the Bible says John admired it. That's what the scripture said. A beautiful church system. Look at it today. Yeah. Feeding the poor. Yeah. Hospitals they've got. Right. I'm talking churches is doing all these things. Putting out the, the tracks, putting out going all over the world. <laughs> Missionaries today. Not for just this message. Missionaries from Methodist Baptist and all that that's poverty stricken that have nothing to eat hardly themselves but out there on the field trying their best to get people to see God no wonder brother Ram called it a white church he said it was pure and clean but what about a pure and clean church when the head of it is the antichrist what good does it do to be the white clean church if the Antichrist is ahead. Right. So that's the way we're going to go through the seals. Just take it and just, just you read the seals and let's go through it and just talk about the things. I've done it in 79 and I'm interested in getting back into it again. And not just try to deal with a seal or this, that, but to deal with what God reveals. You ever notice in your seventh seal? Go back and read it, see if I'm right. But around spoke. And he went, stopped the tape and wouldn't let it out. He went home and preached what is called comments and would not release the original copy until, what was it, 65, after he died. They released the original copy. I showed you that in the seal book right here in the church. A lot of you look like you don't even know what I'm talking about, but that's what he done. Go read your seal book. It's right in the back of it. It tells you when it, they tell you when it was released. Why? Because in his first part, he told you what the seal was. In the other, it made it look like that he didn't know. He was wondering because that was supposed to be done to keep you and I waiting and watching. Forty-something years that we've been watching and waiting. 
not waiting on somebody to jump up and show how wrong Brother Brown is like they're all doing now heard this recently about a man that said now that Brother Brown had the old Catholic doctrine of believing that Jesus was crucified on Friday and raised on Sunday. He said he's really crucified on Wednesday. That's what he said. And you know what? The person is so blind and I know I'm hard and hateful but so illiterate to truth until that was the Catholic doctrine that said Jesus was crucified. That's your Baptist and Methodist doctrine that Jesus was crucified on Wednesday. Rose early Saturday, or Saturday afternoon. Hung around all night Saturday night and waited till Sunday morning to appear to the disciples. That's the Catholic doctrine. And the poor old human saying that that's Brother Brown has got a Catholic doctrine. <laughs> Come on, the Bible said he was raised early the first day of the week. Right. Your prophet said he couldn't have laid in the tomb over 72 hours. He would have rotten. Right. Oh. But you see, that's how wonderful we think we know. Yes, my brother, it's got to be three days. Because Jonah was in the belly of the well three days and three nights. Jonah was a resurrection sign. Didn't matter how long he was there. He was a resurrection sign. He went down, he come up. That's a resurrection sign. The Lord Jesus was crucified on Friday afternoon and rose early the first day of the week, which is on Sunday. Their Sabbath this Saturday, right? Right. But you see, that's what we think we know. But what do we know? Well, Brother Ryan broke the seals. Well, now, where'd you get that at? The seals was revealed to Brother Brown. The Lamb broke the seal. Right. Okay. Let's read one to make sure. Okay. Go ahead with number. We'll go ahead and let's just get number 13 out of the way where we got the breach. Paragraph 142. And revealed as the seals break and are revealed to us. Then we can see what this great plan of redemption is and when and how it's going to be done. It's all hidden in this book of mystery here. It's sealed with seven seals. So the Lamb is the only one who can break them. That's simple enough. Look at the next one. This is the seventh seal, paragraph 43. Our Heavenly Father, here comes that great night. A great night that when a great thing has happened. It's been all around the people. And Father, I pray that the night that, you'll, that it'll be made known beyond a shadow of a doubt to the people's heart and mind that they know that God is still on the throne. See, everybody said redemption was over in 63. Listen to it. And he still loves his people. And the, the hour that the world has longed to see is now approaching where it cries out for redemption. When we see the elements ready to bring it back, we see the elements ready to bring the church into the presence of Christ. We see the bride taking on the form, putting the wedding garment on and making ready. We can see the lights are flickering. We know that we're to end. Now, Heavenly Father, as this goes forward, now to preach or to teach on this great mighty event that taken place in glory some 2,000 years ago. So when was the seventh seal broke? In glory 2,000 years ago. There was no symbol so John couldn't write it. He just said silence in heaven for the space of half an hour, right? That's not a symbol, that was just a statement. Brother Brown said that seven seal is not even a symbol. He said it's just silence in heaven. But when did the seven seal break? 2,000 years ago. 
and was given to the great beloved apostle John. And tonight we're to speak on it. Let the Holy Spirit come forward now in his mighty power of revelation that he might reveal to us that thing which he wants us to know as he has in the last few nights. We commit ourselves to you with the word in Jesus' name. Amen. The wind the seals break 2,000 years ago. The, son, the lamb broke the seal. Left it in a symbol. And then the prophet was to come. And he was the one to know how those symbols were and what they meant. He said, what about you people, you doctors? He said, explain to me why you've got that sign out in the front of your office looks like a cross or a spear or something and a snake all the way around it so they explain why it's there they said we don't know right ask your doctor why is that emblem out there well it's sign of healing well but how come that serpent on the pole How is a serpent on the pole a sign of healing? Come on. You got to go to your prophet then, right? He said, that said, sin was judged. It's why it's a snake on the pole. Sin was judged and paid the price. Now, what if he hadn't broke that symbol? You'd have a snake representing divine healing. <coughs> Now how can a snake represent divine healing when he's the author of the sickness? You see why we had to have a prophet? We had to have a prophet to break the symbols. Thirty some years he preached symbols. Parables. Right. Go look up the word parable. But let me give you a definition. It's a long, complicated story with times an underlying meaning that seems to be different from the surface meaning. Jesus began to talk to them Pharisees. And you know, after a while they caught on and they said, we know he's talking about us. <laughs> he never went over, you Pharisees, you do that. You, you, he just give a parable. Let's make a parable out of it. Brother Branham preached in parables. That's why it's hard to understand. It's going to take the same Holy Spirit that he had to reveal it to you. And like I said, how can that doctor say that snake is a sign of divine healing? Why did God tell a man to take a snake and put it up on a pole? The thing that was killing them. My well, brother Ram said that was a sign that sin was judged. So when they looked at it, they weren't looking to the snake to heal them. They were looking at the God that told them to put it there. It healed the people. When we get through playing around in this message, whether it was Brother Random that broke the seals, or, or whether it was this or another lamb, or who is Brother Random, is he this, that, or the other? And we get down to seeing the Lamb is Almighty God. Revelation chapter 5, you remember we preached on that quite a while. An odd looking lamb. That lamb in chapter 5 has got seven horns and seven eyes. Brother Brown said it come from the church ages. I didn't say that. I didn't have enough sense to. You didn't mean it. He said that lamb come from the church age. Why? Because those seven horns and seven eyes represents the church age. Go back and read chapter one if you don't believe it. I just want to ask you a simple question the other day. 
that God take your revelation and go to Israel. And we know Israel is going to be converted by the two witnesses. I mean, that's going to come under the two witnesses. We know that. We're not talking about it. We're just talking about plain language. What kind of revelation do you and I have? Brother Brown said Israel had one God. He said we've got one God. But what people don't read is what I'm reading there. We won't have to pull it back up on the screen. I think you ought to remember it. world and aim the time is to do it. They'll know that God is still on the throne and he loves people. And that the hour that the world has longed to see is now approaching. He cries out for redemption. Look at the natural world out there what's taking place. Look what he says though. Tonight we speak upon it. Let the Holy Spirit come forward. Now in his mighty power of revelation that he might reveal to us these things which he wants us to know that he has in the last few nights. People. The people's heart and mind that they know God is still on the throne and he still loves his people. Brother Brown said, look at it, said the church is back exactly like it was at Pentecost well I don't see it are you going to tell him it ain't right <laughs> you gotta see it. are you going to be bold enough to tell the prophet oh baby you gotta see it I thought he had a vision a dream or a vision and in that dream or vision that he saw a bride sure they got out of step. Right? But he saw her lining up because he was hollering at her. Right? Whether you believe it or whether you like it or whatever it is, anybody out there or whatever you think about, God is still God. He didn't die when Brother Brown did. He's still God. You say, well, is he on the throne? Well, he must be because if he ain't on the throne, redemption's over. Right. I sure hate to think that I was a parent that had children that was not saved. And to think that I would be the one that decided they wouldn't be saved, but the fact of me saying redemption was over. Well, that's the first thing that hit us in 63. I mean, in 67 when I left the past. Not from the church that was in, but from the people of the message at that day, was saying that redemption was over in 63. And we've been 40 something years with redemption being over, so it ain't nobody been saved since 63. Hmm. Where would you and I be? That's right. Amen. But you see, we just take the ideas and the thoughts. But who broke? Who opened those seals? That's a simple point. The way most people preach, but Abraham did. But remember, the seal was sealed up. But Abraham says on that breach and things through there, I don't know what that first seal is. When he gets on the first seal, he said, I don't know what the second seal is. That's what he or any of the other. Hmm. You know what? You say he did, and you make him a liar. Your problem, not me. Hmm. He didn't know until the lamb broke the seal to him but did he break the seal to him like breaking it and letting it no he didn't break it there it's already broke that's what I'm trying to get you to see the seal was already broke it was broke 2,000 years ago handed down to a prophet in the last days to speak on it to you and I and tell us what those symbols were. He said, well then, Brother Brown, Brother David, you run out on a limb because Brother Brown said there's no symbol on the seventh seal. You're right. I agree with you. That's 
ask why if you'll read the seventh seal book and read it real careful you'll find brother Branham talking about his own life and what God was doing in him <laughs> Jesus preached six seals never preached the seventh that's Matthew 24 read it why because he was the seventh Amen. Amen. and brother Adam wasn't the seal but he knew what that seal was <laughs> Brother Branham, page 45. I believe I'm right now. If I don't, I'll get it for you. 45, it's the rising of the sun. What is those seals? He said it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's your seal, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not the revelation of the Antichrist. Yeah. That's what everybody's always made. You say, well, most people, you say to them, what is the first seal? Antichrist. No, that's not the seal. Seal the Holy Spirit. Antichrist is in opposition. What is that six seal, Brother Brown? Tribulation period. That's not Jesus Christ. Come on, who broke the seal? Who do you find? I believe they were broke 2,000 years ago in glory because the Bible said, your prophet said that happened. And then he come to a time that God told him what that symbol was under that seal. And when he did, he preached it. There was what was to come to you and I. That would open up the entire Bible. You had never heard the one come on you says. You had never heard the one where Brother Adam was talking about. Let's see if I can paraphrase it. That See, the whole book is a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's why they couldn't understand it. That's why we kept on reading Peter. Those people knew. Come on, your Bible says it. They knew that it was not unto them that God done these things. Right. But it was to for us in the end time. The whole Bible pointing to you and I. Like I was trying to say last night. The Bible says that God spoke to Abraham, told him to get up and go. And a man that was totally from heathenism, that's your prophet's word, not mine now. He said Abraham was a heathen. Making idols for his daddy-in-law. And he gets up and goes. Can't you see the day that God stopped you and told you to turn around and to repent of your sins? Do you remember that? I sat there last night and rejoiced hearing the people tell of their experience of Jesus Christ in their life. And when God first contacted them, can you remember Might have been in that little child stage. Might have been a little teenager. Might have been whatever. But you remember that something began to talk to you. Right. But yet we say, if I'd just been back there like Abraham and heard God, who do you think's talking to you? Right. Yeah, but I'm not Abraham. Brother Brown said, every son of Abraham was to take the same journey that Abraham took look at Abraham he met God I mean God spoke to him they got his justification he begins to leave and follow that God and God begins to contact him and after a while he literally comes right into his presence and he feeds him a calf almighty God 
You say, well, if that never happened to me, was you justified? Have you been sanctified? <coughs> Have you been filled with the Spirit of Almighty God? Yes. Then God contacted you. Right. Amen. When are we going to get to the place to take the Scriptures where that when it talks of Jesus said, I'm pleased to dwell in Him? Why can't we believe that He's pleased to dwell in us? Amen. Amen. Right. If He's not, then we don't have a new birth. That's simple enough. There's a lot of difference in if you get lambs. The seals was broke 2,000 years ago. Put in a symbol to keep the church waiting. In the end time, a prophet was to come that that symbol could be broke. Not the seal. The seal was done broke. But it has to happen on earth. Let's stand together. 364 in Spiral Book. 364 in a Spiral Book. Anybody have a need? In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need a Savior. Be very sure. Anybody have a need? sincere in our hearts and say yes. Amen. God is real we love him we thank him right. whatever comes or goes we still go right on down the road right. and thank you Lord Amen. because we believe right. Father we thank you for the service today and we pray that what we said would be needful and helpful to each and every one forgive our sins Lord and just guide us direct us in your grace and love 
May we see you, Lord, made manifest among us. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Remember the service this afternoon. Pray one for another.